Hello, welcome to this new section. As I told you, we are going to use a new verb tense to talk about actions that happened in the past. The name of this verb tense is the present perfect continuous. And this is the verb tense that is used to describe actions that started in the past and continue until now. What does that mean? First, let me give you an idea about the verb tenses that we use and the auxiliaries that we use for that. We have these examples that, and that is going to help us understand um, how we use the tense and uh, what auxiliaries and verbs we use and in which forms. That is the main thing. Let's read the first example. It says, how long have you been sitting at your desk? As you can see, we have the auxiliary have. If we're using have with you, we are using that form of have uh, that is a plural form for you. How long have you? Then we have been sitting. Been sitting includes a form of be and a verb in ing. You know what? That is the key to naming this the present perfect continuous. Why present perfect? When we have a perfect tense, we have uh, a form of the auxiliary have. In that case, we're using have here. If we're talking about continuous or progressive, which is another name for this, for this type of tenses, when we talk about, remember when we were talking about the present, perf uh, the present progressive, past progressive, when we were saying, I am working, I was working. So here, in the same way, we have a form of be and a form of the main verb ending in ing. In this case, the main verb is sitting, which is sit. That main verb ends in ing, but before that, we have a form of be. The form of be is that been that you have there. By the way, the pronunciation is been, not being. All right? Being is what we eat. Um, so, Let's understand the components in terms of grammar or structure of this sentence. How long have you been? Have is what makes this a present perfect um, sentence. And been sitting, that form of be and the verb in ing, is what makes it continuous. So, if we are talk asking about how long have you been sitting at your desk, we are talking, actually, as I told you in the, in, the, in the explanation, we're talking about an action that started in the past. Somebody sat um, at the desk in the past, and that action has been going on, has been continuing for some time, even up to now, and we foresee that it might continue like that later, but even if we don't confirm that it is going to continue, we know that it has started in the past and has um, occurred until this time in the present. So, look at the answer. The answer says, I have been sitting at my desk for two hours already. It means that two hours ago, I sat there, and for all that time until now, I have been sitting there. So that is the structure that we are using uh, to refer to actions that started in the past and continue and have continued even until the present time. Let me give you another example because I know all this terminology might be a little confusing. And let me add something else about that form of be there. The question is, how long has your favorite TV show been running? That is the question. We have a TV show, like a comedy, and they have seasons, and every year they have one or two seasons. And for many years, if the show continues, um, we say that it has lasted for all that number of years. So the answer that he gives is, or that she gives is, my favorite TV show has been running for over 30 years. There are some shows that have been running that long, that have been playing on TV for that long. So, as you can see, the show started over 30 years ago. So, let's say 31, 33, 35 years ago. And for all these, these years, the show has been on air, on the air. So, it has been running for all these years. 
what I wanted to add with this example is that the form, the form of B that we have there, because it follows the auxiliary have, it is in the past participle form. It is not the show is running, it's the show has been running. So that form of B will always be been. Why? Because it's after the auxiliary have. All right? So I want you to, if you need to, go back, replay this section to see that we understand each other about why we use the present perfect continuous or present perfect progressive. It's the same name. Actions that start in the past continue until the present. So once you have reviewed that, or if you're ready, because you started this at school anyway with your teacher, uh, let's continue with uh, one simple activity. This is very simple. And these are the instructions. Complete the following conversations using the subject and the verb in parentheses. So, as you can see, all these sentences have some blanks, means that we need to complete them, and uh, they have one subject. The first sentence, for example, has Martha as a subject, and the verb that we need to use is work. So, we have to complete the sentence in, uh, with something like, how long have you been, or has Martha been, or have, I don't know, you have to decide, is Martha singular or plural? Do we have to use have or has? The thing is that we need to use a form of have plus been plus the main verb, which is in the, for the first example is work, in the ing form. Why don't you go back if you need help? Why don't you go back and look at my, my examples? And then using that as a model, we can complete the rest. All right? So for now, I will ask you to, as usual, pause your video, complete the exercise, and when you are ready, you move on so that we can compare our answers. All right? Pause the video right now, please. All right. I hope that you did it and that you have your answers ready so that we can compare them. Let's look at the first um, conversation. So the complete answer is, how long has Martha been working for the same company? So we use has because Martha is singular. And we have been and working. All right, and the answer is, she has been working for the same company for 12 years. Right? Listen to the two people pronounce this example. How long has Martha been working for the same company? She has been working for the same company for 12 years. Excellent. Remember that you can always pronounce after the speakers. All right? Let's go to the next um, question and answer. So I hope that you have your answer ready. All right. So how, would, how did you complete this? The answer is, how long has Christina been sleeping on the couch? Why has? Because we're talking about one person, singular. And the answer is, she has been sleeping on the couch for four hours. Easy, right? So listen to the pronunciation, please. How long has Christina been sleeping on the couch? She has been sleeping on the couch for four hours. All right. So I hope that you pronounced um, with them. Next, look at the question that you had. And this is a sample answer, or actually the only correct answer that we have. How long have the kids been playing outside? Why have? Because the kids is plural. How long have the kids been playing outside? Answer, they have been playing outside all afternoon. All right? Great. So listen to the pronunciation. How long have the kids been playing outside? They have been playing outside all afternoon. All right. Very good. And thank you for listening and pronouncing after them. Let's look at the next question. Do you have the answer? This is the answer that I have for you. How long has grandma been cooking today? Yes, has, because we're talking about one person, grandma. The answer, she has been cooking all morning. All right, listen 
to the to the pronunciation, please. How long has Grandma been cooking today? She has been cooking all morning. Excellent. Now, let's look at the last example. Oh, actually, the last question. I'm going to give you the answer. Ready? Do you have your answer ready? Here is the answer. How long has Elena been riding her bike? Why has? Because we're talking about Elena only, that's singular. And the answer is she has been riding her bike for two hours. All right? So, pretty simple. As you can see, the structure always has a form of have. That's what, what, that's what makes it perfect. <laughs> and then we have a form of be, which is always in the past participle form, which is been, the pronunciation, been, not been, no, been. And then the main verb in um, the ing form. All right, you already know the rules for the ing forms. If the, if the verb ends in silent e, then we eliminate it, and then we add ing. But you have studied that in the past. All right, listen to the pronunciation of this. How long has Elena been riding her bike? She has been riding her bike for two hours. Great. All right, so with this, we finish this practice. And in our next video, we're going to talk about some curious facts about things that have been happening for some time and probably we didn't know about them. All right? So, see you on the next video.